Well, hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this one, I'm going to do another product review of a camera, but in this case, it's a doorbell camera from Yuki. It's battery powered, but it has a rechargeable battery on it. And um, I suppose they give you the equipment to recharge it, but we'll take a look when we get in there. It does not require any sort of wiring to your, to your home or to the doorbell fixture that you may already have. It takes over everything and provides full HD coverage and two-way sound when somebody rings the doorbell, the button that's on the front of this. So what I'll do is I'll open it up, we'll see what it comes with, and then we'll see how it works, okay? Okay, so here's the box. Let's take a look at what's inside of it. Looks like it pushes out from the bottom or the top. Opens up this way. Okay, nice instruction booklet. Oh, it's really well made. And it's readable. It's got nice print to it. So I'll take a look at this and make sure that I can understand how it should be set up and how it should be tested. Uh, it has like a thank you slash warranty card in it. Okay, And then here's the camera. So let's pull this out. Nothing underneath. I'll pull this on the side here. It definitely has a tear on it. That's where you see the reflection on this right now. So I'll go ahead and, uh, and do that and see what if, how that works out. Okay, takes care of the tear. Looks like there's a separate tear on this part right here. So I'll pull this one off as well. There we go. Okay, what else is in here inside the box? We have a little bag with some goodies in it. Let's open this up and take a look at what it comes with. Looks like it has some mounting hardware. There's these uh, double-sided tape pieces, three of them. So if you want to use double-sided tape, it looks like they provide it. Not sure how that would work on brick or anything like that, but we'll see. We got the regular screws and uh, plastic anchors to mount it. Probably the preferred way to do it. Hopefully those screws would work or you have to get your own. And then I believe what this is, yeah, I think this is to, uh, to open it up. So there's a little case here. It looks like there's another tear on here. It looks like you push into here. It looks like you probably just have to, you can use any real long pin to do it or a paper clip. And this should sort of pop open. Probably don't have to do that normally because it looks like the little port here, the top one is available to access for charging it. Yep. And it's a reset button as well. You push that down. On the other side, looks like it has the, uh, oh, the opening for a micro SD card. So you could put an SD card in here if you wanted to get it to capture and save the images. I assume it rolls out, rolls over on the file system in there. And that's about it that you can see here. Let me read the instructions and find out exactly what you do before I try to turn this thing on. Okay. Well, according to the instructions, I've got to take this uh, charger. It comes with a USB charger. It looks like a mini USB and type A on the other side. See how long this is? About three feet long. I always like to charge things up and the manual recommends that. So let me go ahead and charge this guy up first. And we'll see how long that takes, if at all. It does not come with the power adapter, so you have to provide your own. So I happen to have one right here. And I'll plug this in and see what we get. According to the instructions, there's a light, but it's probably inside of here. Let me pull this out real quick and take a look. So let's open this guy up again. And we'll do it this way. Let's see what we get. If there's a charger light in here somewhere. Yeah, there is, right next to it. I just didn't see it. I see it better now. A little red light. Supposedly when that light turns blue, then we're fully charged. So we'll see how long that takes. I'm taking note of the time right now. And uh, we'll, we'll take a look. Okay, that took just under three hours. And now it looks like I see a blue light in there. So it's all fully charged now. So now we can go ahead and try turning it on and setting it up and we'll be ready to go. Okay, I now need to download the app. So I'll come in here. And since I'm using iOS, I will click on that and download the app onto uh, my smartphone. Okay, let me uh, download this uh, cloud dot. I have to do a get on it. I'll install it. Okay, now it's going to start uh, walking me through. Looks like I have to create an account first, so I'll do that. At this point, I was unable to actually record what was taking place on my smartphone, so it's pretty straightforward. It's uh, self-intuitive, and uh, the biggest part of that happens to be the configuration of it. I suggest that you pay attention to the particular parameters 
related to getting the alerts and in particular the alert in terms of motion identification. Well, okay, I got it uh, all configured. I got it on my iPhone, connected up. I don't have it installed on my door, obviously, but I still may do that yet. But what happens is I don't have any apps running here right now. The phone is on though. I have it set to alert me if it gets a signal from this. It is using my 2.4 gigahertz wireless to communicate between these two devices. It will not work with the five gig, only 2.4. You find it out when you try to set it up like I did. And uh, initially I default to the five gig on my phone and it just, I couldn't configure this thing at all. I won't go through all the details on the menus and how this was set up. If you're interested in a follow-up video, let me know and I'll be glad to try to put one together. But let me just show you quickly what happens here. If I hold my phone up and I hit the doorbell, watch what happens. And if I see here, I got an alert on the phone. I can click on the alert and I can see what it looks like. So I can see myself actually on the phone. I can answer, to answer it or I could ignore it. I'm going to answer it. So now it's on the phone, got crazy echoes because they're bouncing back and forth. I turned off one of the mics so that might look a little bit better, but still, it's still a challenge. You can see me on the doorbell right now if you looked at the screen on my iPhone, so it does work fine. The configuration is fairly straight. Let me hang this up. It stays in the app after you've disconnected. If I click on the little gear on the bottom left of the picture, there's one here for settings and you go through all of the settings. Won't go through them all right now. Like I said, I can do a follow up video on that. But the one to watch out for is I set it up initially for motion detection. And basically every time it, this motion sensor here on the device, this part right here, regular motion sensor goes off, this thing turns blue and I get an alert and I can actually click on my phone and see the picture of what it sees. So if you're into that level of security, like maybe for a back door, then that might be you know something that's worthwhile doing. But for purposes of a front door, I don't know if that'll be worth it. You'll have a lot of alerts on your phone. Anyway, it seems to work fine. I'm not sure if I'll actually install it or not, you know, on my any of my doors, possibly the back door, but the front door already has protection on it. So that that may not be uh, necessary there. And I do get some visitors at times on the back door. So if you're interested, seems like a pretty good device. It stays connected. I can uh, set a lot of different options in it. The alerts are obviously the most important thing. You don't have to have the app running, as I said earlier. So you could just have your phone norm normally being used and uh, you can communicate with this system. So till next time.